right, Representative Edelson, thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, um, please start by kind of reintroducing yourself. The last couple of years have been a blur. So tell us what part of the state that you represent and what are some of the uh, issues that are important to your constituents? Oh, that's great. Um, I represent Edina. Um, and so um, I've been, it's my third year, um, my second term. And uh, I, I, my background, just to, to kind of like add some context to the issues I work on, um, is as a clinical social worker. And so I did mental health therapy. I was on a lot of boards before I was elected um, in our community. And so issues um, that really matter to Edina is education. And I am on the education policy committee. I was previously on education finance. Um, so education is a huge issue. Public safety is um, always uh, one of our top um, issues when we kind of look at what Edina cares about. Um, and, and health is, is something I, I also work on a lot, um, mental health, because of my background. And you mentioned it. This is your second term in the House. Mm -hmm. um, take us back a few years. What prompted you to first run? You know, I think I was really, it's a really good question. And I'm always like struggling for a really good answer. Um, you know, I, I was just really involved in my, in our community. Um, I was on literally, I think, eight different boards and commissions. And sure. um, at one point I was like, you know, I don't know if this is sustainable. Maybe I should consolidate. And uh, it just so happens that I, I was thinking about, you know, maybe I should run for the house. And so nobody like asked me to run. Um, it was just kind of my idea um, at a, actually at a book club. So very interesting that I was like, maybe I should do oh, this. Wow. Yeah, I know. So kind of an interesting <laughs> thing. Mm -hmm. So here we are now. You're you mentioned your third year in. What keeps you motivated? I you know, I love the policy, Chris. I love you know digging down um, and just kind of figuring out what does uh, your policies and the laws that we create at the Capitol, it, you know, it's one thing to look at it on paper and talk about it, but to really kind of think in this macro sense of like, what does that look like in practice? Yeah. And um, I've learned a lot over these last three years. I think you come in, um, I came in with a large class in 2018 and it was just, we were in the majority and um, it was like drinking from a fire hose, everybody said, and it was <laughs> true. Uh, but I, I love the policy piece of it. I also really, I do a lot of youth work um, where I bring, I have intern for a day at the Capitol with, um, I partner with all the high schools in my area, like Edina, Blake, Breck, Badil. Um, and I bring a lot of uh, youth to the Capitol as well as doing summer policy internships with high school students. And I love that work. I love it because it's like making civics more accessible um, to, to our young people. They're gonna be leading and they sure. already are leading. And so I really like being a, a part of that partnership. And I'm a parent myself. I know you're a mom as well. Yeah. Um, I know it can be difficult balancing work and being a parent. Um, what's that like being a legislator and, and do, doing that? Yeah, well, I just, like I said, I just got my kids on the bus. Right, yeah. <laughs> I have twins in middle school, and then I have a third grader um, who thinks he's 16. Uh, <laughs> Sure, you don't have that at all. Uh, it's you know, it's it's a balance. Uh, with I think one thing that has been taken from the pandemic, that which you know, it's this the last two years have been so challenging, so yeah. challenging. Um, one uh, you know thing that I think that we can take from this though is how um, being able to sometimes work in a remote capacity. Um, is really helpful for, for parents and uh, for people that have young children. Cause like, what if they get sick? Um, I still want to, you know, be able to represent my community's voice. Um, and if I don't have childcare, which is actually going to be a really big issue. Yeah. I think we look at, um, as we look at just the state's workforce right now, uh, we have a, a lot of um, issues around childcare and how are we gonna get people, um, even as we kind of come to this next session, I'm like my plan, even if we're remote, is to be there when we are in session, but it's making sure that you have, um, you know, childcare for that. And I think that's a lot of members because we have so many more now with young kids is it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a challenge in, in 2022. What else in 2022 during the session do you think is going to be a challenge or, or what needs to be worked on and addressed this, this next coming session? Well, uh, I mean, so many issues. I think we have a, um, I think the uh, the challenge of um, we have redistricting and we have an election coming up and it's a policy year. And so um, 
I think, you know, there, there's that dynamic that's the backdrop, but you know we have um, we we have a pretty big possibly projected surplus. So there's going to be some one-time money, um, but you also have with that just a lot of issues in terms of staffing and in workforce shortages. It's um, in our care facilities. It's a it's it's a really big deal right now, um, and so I think we're going to need to be talking about almost always what are we going to do about this uh, workforce uh, crisis that we have. Um, it's coming out of the pandemic, and now here we are with this other really challenging issue. I mean, we have schools that are understaffed, can't keep bus drivers. I was just on the phone with some care facilities that they're staffing um, in some of our homes, um, disability homes at 40 to 70 percent. That's that's not okay, and that's, that's putting people at risk. So what are we going to do to solve that? I think that's going to be a focus this session. Okay. And just finally, I uh, want to finish on this note. The next time my family's driving through Edina, what's a, under the radar, maybe restaurants or someplace that we need to go to kind of enjoy the day? Oh, oh my gosh. There's so many. There's so many good ones. Um, okay. So I, uh, if you're wanting to go more fancy, the restoration hardware um, top, the, the the restaurant, rooftop restaurant is amazing. It, Very nice. It's so pretty. It's like you're, like you're like in LA. And then <laughs> if you're looking for like a quaint little coffee shop that maybe has like yummy sandwiches. Patisserie Margot is, I would say, outside of session is my office. So you might see me there. Nice. Um, they have, yes, they have amazing macaroons and croissant sandwiches and it's just like bringing France to Edina so 